My name is Benedict Curzen, and in this episode, I will be taking you to the neighborhood called Shellash and Marvilla, where we'll be discovering the beauty of modernist architecture and postmodernist architecture in Lisbon. This set of buildings were designed by Tomas Severa, who is an iconic architect of the postmodernist style here in Portugal. The sun is still not up yet, but this is the perfect time of the day for me to feel the general atmosphere of the neighborhood say hi to people, introduce myself. We are photographing the architecture. You want to say cheese? Okay. I love you, cheese. What? Well, obrigada. Can I take more if you want? Perfetto! Obrigada! So I just arrived at the building called Pantera Corderosa and it's a building that was conceptualized uh, in uh, 1970, uh, um, two, three, four in those years. I think uh, the architects uh, will not be angry with me if I say it's a building that is really kind of a transition. And it's exactly the period of time that the architecture in Portugal was also the country, the whole country was in transition. I really like the contrast. There is this blue of the Portuguese sky that contrasts with the pink. And then you have those lines, the, the shadows, and create more volume into the, into the building. So I'm gonna I identify this spot that I really like already. And I wanna go around the building and look for some more spots. What I'm looking for here, and it's really the building teaching me that slowly, is there is a question of the volumes, there is a question of the contrast, um, and how with one picture you can either use the perspective, but also you can use the contrast between the shadow and the highlights to create this tension, this drama, that's gonna make the picture visually appealing. And one those is almost as if those elements of people's life, the blue sheet, hiding the creating shade inside the building is becoming completely part of the architecture, adding like a touch of blue on the pink. Falar, falas inglês ou francês? Ah, inglês. Ah, inglês? Okay. Eu posso traduzir. Eu ah, posso traduzir. Pronto, uh, acho que nós estamos aqui há 40 anos e, é como, como podem ver, está para aqui um... Pronto. Uh, devia estar tudo, tudo impecável, tudo, tudo bom, tudo bom, tudo bem feito. This gentleman lives here for 40 years, he's saying this is a little bit uh, worn. It should be restored, the, the buildings and all that. But I can see that some part has been repainted. Algumas partes foram pintadas sim, sim, de temos, novo. Temos o caso daquele prédio ali. Chegaram, chegaram até um ponto e depois deixaram o outro, outra stopped. parte. Ele está dizendo que no lado do prédio é muito pior do que isso. Muito pior do que isso. Se agora... Ele quer me agradar. Ele quer me agradar. Com esse hat ou com esse hat? Com esse hat é bonito, sim. Com esse hat, sim, sim. But the colors are perfect. He's a perfect match to the building. It's amazing. <laughs> wow. Senor Carvalho. Up, up, up. 
Merci. <rire> Bye. Yeah, muito obrigado, so senhor. <laughs> Super nice. Oh, shit. I just finished another roll of film. Hop. You wind it all the way up. To make sure that so you trust yourself when you shoot with film and it's a work of patience because you don't know what's going to come out i mean technically you can do as much as you can to expose well compose well but i always feel that when it comes out of the lab it's a bit of magic and always a big surprise so shooting analog photography also allows you to read the light. The lights are measured in photography with the speed and the aperture. Right now it's seven o'clock in the evening and I know already that in the shades, maybe the coordinates will be at, uh, the speed will be 125 at eight. And in the highlight, we will be at 250 at eight, maximum 500 at eight. I remove the curtains of metal and we're gonna shoot the first frame of this new roll. I arrived at the assemble of buildings called Cinco Dedos. It's the five fingers. They were designed by Vitor Figueiredo in 1973, so just before the Carnation Revolution. It's an assemble that I think we can describe as very raw, very simple, very monumental also. Uh, and the whole elegance that you don't really understand from the ground, but the whole elegance of the building and this set of building is really from the top. They are organized a bit like a fan. So it's quite delicate and at the same time very um, impressive. So I, I would like to change the lens because the building here is so monumental that I would really like to capture something that refers to the modernist architecture and which is really the serial aspect of the building. All those lines, so there is the horizontal line um, for the floors and also there is a certain um, aspect of verticality with all the tiny square and the tiny windows. So the teleobjective is a little bit too tight with a Hasselblad, you won't be able to take any picture, but there is this iron curtain. Yes. And now I've got the serial aspect of the building in a really, really much bigger scale than with the tele. Um, with the Hasselblad, you can keep the coordinates. So for instance, um, right now, the coordinate is like is 500, the speed will be 500, and it's very bright, the building is very bright, painted in cream, and the sun in Portugal is extremely strong, so I'd rather underexpose a little bit to get all the possible details at 16. I'm facing a bit of a challenge right now because I'm working with a Hasselblad and with analog uh, photography and film. So the fan structure that the architect designs is only visible from the air, from, um, from a satellite view or from a drone view. And I'm trying to go around the building to see how 
the building's lines and how they meet or separate uh, uh, to be able to translate this geographical feature of this set of building. Where's this pigeon? That's one extremely patient pigeon. It's almost as if he's waiting for me to take my shot. Voila! I'm going to show you how I'm making a composite. Here we have a perfect um, setting because there is this perspective um, that drives the eye towards the central point of what we described earlier on as the fan of, the, of all those buildings, the center point. And there is still light lighting up buildings in the back. The foreground has fallen into the shade. But as I'm building the composite, some part of the building will become brighter, so we will all, almost have a degrade. I just realized that the building just the building behind us is reflecting on the on those windows to translate this proximity of the buildings to translate to see the way also that the way that the light works from one building to another and which part of the day the facade are lit up by the sun and the one all of a sudden that becomes uh, enter into the shade. So I'm using the, the light from the outside. We are only working from the outside. So the light is fairly constant. Uh, it's just at the end of the day, it has a tendency to change, especially during, uh, especially in the shades and the, and the highlights. So um, I just need to reevaluate every half an hour, let's say, to reevaluate what are the light values and what is the light exposure in the shades. The light meter allows you to enter different values. The three most important values to have perfect exposure uh, of your film. The first value is the ISO. We are working here with uh, 400 ISO film. It allows you also to enter the speed and give you the perfect coordinate of the speed, shutter speed, and the aperture value. So in the shades, at this time of the day, for 400 ISO, the exposure value is coordinates is 500 at 8. In direct sun, the exposure coordinate will be at 500 at 11. 